Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross and today I'm going to be looking over Astro Militarum data sheets looking at five unit highlight. So one thing to preference this with is that we don't have the points yet so we don't know exactly what the efficiency of all the units are going to be in terms of are they going to be low cost so they're really efficient or too much costed and they're not going to be efficient. We will find that out shortly within the next day or two. So with that let's have a look at the units. Going to start off with an epic hero for the Astro Militarum, and that is Lord Solar Leonotus. So, what does he have? He is very fast with 12 inch movement, lacking the 2 plus save that I'd really want, and wounds are quite nice at 8, and he does have a 4 plus invul save. In terms of weapons, his range should be nice, uh, it should really be 18 inches, but it does do 2 attacks, hitting quite well, high strength, decent AP, and okay damage. And in melee, he does okay, he's a uh, 6 attacks, weapon skill 2 plus, strength 6, AP minus 2 and 2 damage and then he does have some extra attack from the hooves. Not bad but could be good against some of the weaker infantry or even some more elite infantry that do have 2 wounds. Now in terms of abilities, he has a command point farm just giving off straight away at the start of your command phase a command point so that's really nice if he's on the field. After deployment, de redeploy 3 units even in strategic reserve which can be useful just to get in better positioning. But very importantly, he can issue three orders to any Astra Militarum unit. So I think he's mainly taken for his command point farm and also issuing orders. He can issue orders to super heavies because it is a vehicle, so they are a viable target there. It's basically any Astra Militarum unit. I believe you need to make him join a command squad so he can box cast his orders 24 inches rather than 6 inches. And you likely probably need to bring them with infantry squads because they can have two leaders come into their squads. That would be one would be the Lord Solar, then the command squad, to dodge being killed. You need to use them to really soak up some of the damage. Otherwise, him on his own would be quite bad. If he had, say, within a vehicle, he had the lone operative, operative sort of ability, where then he'd be more guiding vehicles. That would have been excellent, but that is not the case here. He does need to have some squads around him to keep him alive. On to the humble Scout Sentinels. And believe it or not, Sentinels were actually the first model I ever got as a gift when entering Warhammer many, many, many years ago. So it's nice to see them back on the field, potentially. In terms of stats, they are fast with movement 10, surprisingly tough at toughness 7 and 7 wounds. And then they also have Obsec 2, which is really, really quite good. In terms of weapons, range, plenty of options here. I'm liking the option of possibly Last Cannon and Hunter Killer Missile, just really to bring down heavier uh, opponents there, so he can do some damage to vehicles and monsters. Melee is fine, if the chainsaw is cheap it might be worth taking. In terms of abilities, as Scout 9, which is good, but also Daring Recon, at the start of the shooting phase, select an enemy unit within 18 inches invisible. Your units reroll hit rolls of 1, and if firing indirect, ignores the to hit penalty. Overall thoughts, fantastic unit, really depends on the points here, but Daring Recon debuff allows the unit to basically give the army much more higher accuracy, giving you rerolls to hit. Really, really good to target down a specific unit. And can use the stratagem to bring back a regiment unit as they are regiment, so if they die, bring them back on. On to looking at a Lehman Ross variant, we have the Lehman Ross Exterminator. So in terms of stats, I think it's okay, pretty standard I think for Lean Rosses, they are tough with toughness 11 which is great, 2 up save and 13 wounds which is going to help them survive quite a wee bit. And in terms of weapons, they are okay with a ranged exterminator auto, is fine, it does lack AP but we'll get to that in a minute. And has twin link so you can more accuracy in terms of wounds and rapid fire if you are close. But his ability, which is Withering Hail, in your shooting phase, after this module has shot, choose a unit which that was hit by it, and until the end of the phase, whenever another Astro Militarum shoots at that unit, improve the AP by 1, and it does not stack. So you're likely going to take one of these, depending on the points, if they are quite cheap, just to get that AP debuff. It works for the whole army, again we're looking at that target unit and really target it down, and so if you go with the scouts they're going to give you that real hit, so of 1, and then this guy is going to improve the AP on that target as well. Some armies aren't going to really care about this too much, but I do see a lot of potential of just taking one and firing away. All you need to do is hit, and then suddenly you are, your whole army is going to be a lot more efficient when damaging them. So, yeah, it depends on points. Sometimes you might just go, well, I'll just take something else that's damaging because this is a little bit too expensive. But I can see a lot of potential with it. Next, we have the Manticore. 
uh, one of my favourite units that I have painted myself. And in terms of stats, not bad, not as tough as Lehman Ross. It's only tough as 10, which is still impressive. 3 up save and does have 11 wounds. Overall, fine. You're just not going to be as tough as a, as a Ross variant. In terms of weapons, we have the Rockets, which are very nice. They're D6 plus 1 shots, high strength, high AP, high damage. Very nice for damaging elite blobs because they also have blast. And some lower toughness vehicles as well, and monsters will also be hurt by this quite a wee bit as well. Also indirect, in case you need to fire indirectly, and heavy. So quite nice in that way as well. The indirect also gives you some stratagem options. In terms of abilities, Furious Barrage, if target unit of 5 models or more, reroll the hit rolls. So we are looking at elite blobs are going to suffer quite heavily to this unit. Overall thoughts? Points may decide how efficient it is with this one because the reroll hits is quite nice, the blast is quite nice. Uh, Got to make sure that you do get the AP improvement from the heavy if you stay still, and there are other ways to improve this on top. We do we can order it, which is quite good. Help it benefit possibly from extra bombardiers if needed to improve the bliss skill, or at least to hit because the order can help the bliss skill, and then the expert bombardiers if you're looking directly at it can help the plus one tip if you're firing in directly I suppose because you are the heavy if you stayed still. Yeah, I can see potential buying this unit. It's really going to come down to points whether it's going to be better than just taking one of the Rust variants. There are a few different ones there. But in terms of damage with the Manticore, I can see plenty of potential there. It's got great stats on it that way. And finally, I really want to include one of the Bane Blade variants as it were and I'm going with the Bane Hammer. So in terms of stats, super tough. We have high toughness at 13, it's got a good save of 2+, high amount of wounds, kind of what you'd expect with such a unit like this. In terms of weapons, we have the Tremor Cannon, which is super nice, it's 2d6 plus 3 with Blast, which uh, should help clear out elite units or anchor units quite well, so I really, really like that. Uh, melee, very poor. I would have really expected it to have a bit of AP and damage too, it doesn't seem to be much better than a Lehman Ross here. And in terms of abilities, it is firing deck 12, which is going to be very, very important. It also has Tremor Quake, which after selecting a target for Tremor Cannon, but I believe before firing, this unit and infantry within 3 inches of the target take a battle shock test, which is fine. Now, what makes it a little bit spicy is that you can load this up with weapon teams, as it does have a transport capacity of 26, with each weapon team taking up 2 slots, and then firing deck is 12. And what that means is you can essentially put 12 mortars or 12 last guns, I believe, inside it. Be super well protected. So if you've got ways to protect it, great. And then they simply count as firing from the model itself. So any buffs should apply to them as well. So take Lord Solar. You can issue an order, probably take aim to give it uh, an extra to its ballistic skill of shots from it. And then if you've got the Scamp Sentinel to reroll ones, if you're going to focus down something, you get the idea there, okay, that this unit can essentially get a bunch of buffs and then overload with a bunch of weapons from the mortar team, uh, from mortar teams, from the weapon teams inside it, depending on what you take. So I can see potential here, possibly going to be a bit expensive there, considering it is pretty much always going to be mainly a shooting platform, offers very little in melee. But yeah, if it does prove to be quite good points, along with the weapon teams, you might have a very, very efficient weapon platform here. One scary thing here, line of sights and stuff could be a bit of a problem, it is Titanic which does help, but I can see potential of the sort of Bane Blade variants, this is the one I sort of landed on. And that is it for my thoughts on Astrum Militarum dead sheets. looking at 5 unit highlights. Honestly there was actually quite a few units here that I put in for potential and I changed my mind on a few of them back and forwards because there was some that, that just had a little bit of choice between them in terms of what they could do. I'm quite happy with this 5 unit highlights. Please let me know if there's any other units you think, yeah, no, they take over president of other ones. You might think a Rust is better than a Manticore, after all the toughness would be better. Let me know in the comments. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on an R Tabletop Salt Battle Report.